great catching up with Babe. It's been a a bit of a wild Cowboys offseason for sure. In fact, Babe, if you had, you were out of town and out of the country, you probably didn't hear this, but the Cow- the Dallas Cowboys, while you were gone, stayed under the salary cap. <laughs> you know, even that that they didn't know who Roger Staubach was, but these players would all tell me, "Hey, the Cowboys are under the cap." <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that, right? Yes. That's the yeah. world. You know, it's as you guys know, the off season rolls around here, and you, you just don't get excited about it because they're not going to really do anything. Um, and you know that going in, that's their that's their formula, whether you like it or not. And it's a little bit like, hey, for 20 years when Brady was in New England, right, the draft, first day of the draft wasn't much fun because they were always drafting 28, 29, 32. <laughs> so the, the, the New England draft day was a little bit like Cowboys offseason. Don't, don't get too excited about it. But I know, and I know everybody is panicking, and, and they're certainly not as good today as they were when the season ended, uh, the Cowboys, that is. But – there's so much movement that's going to go on between now and when they open training camp that the, the team that we're kind of looking at today, at least on paper, is not going to be the team that, that goes to training camp in Oxnard. Um, so there's, there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, you, obviously you have the draft. You're going to have veteran players getting released on the June 1st cut down. So guys will become available, and we'll just see how they fill out the roster. Well, uh, we did see some talent walk out the building here, babe. I'm curious in your mind who who is the who's going to be the most challenging to replace. Is it going to be a guy like Amari Cooper? Is it going to be Lael Collins or maybe Randy Gregory? Which one to you is the oh no wow? How do we let this guy go? It's going to be tough to replace this guy. Well, I think the pass rushes were always the hardest to find. You you guys know that, and so Gregory, in my mind. Um, was probably the biggest loss. And when you look at it, uh, of those three guys, um, Amari and, and Collins and, and Randy Gregory, they only targeted one, right? They let Collins walk. They let Amari walk. And they, they went after Gregory. And obviously we know what happened with the whole Denver situation and the contract. But they, they clearly wanted to keep him. Um, but they didn't get that job done. So, again, to me, the, it's hard to find pass rushes. <laughs> and when you got them, you got to keep them. And, uh, you know, they won't have Randy Gregory. Yeah. Hey, babe, I want to ask you about uh, C.D. Lamb. Uh, they let Mari Cooper go. They trade him for a fourth-round pick, fifth-round pick, rather. Uh, but my question is about Kellen Moore, who's only going into his fourth year as a coordinator, and Dak Prescott. Um, which one's going to have the harder job? Will it be Dak deciding to not be as turnover-adverse and throwing the ball in coverage to, to C.D. Lamb, or Kellen Moore – creating a scheme to open him up since defensive coordinators will now treat him like Amari Cooper and try to take him out of the game? Well, to me, it's always your job to beat people one-on-one um, as a receiver. So uh, I think we put too much, I don't want to say emphasis, but we, we always talk about scheming people. Well, you're not, you're not really looking for the one-on-zero matchup, right? Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen. You're looking for the one-on-one matchup. And I I posted it to my Twitter, not that everybody needs to watch it, but the San Francisco game, they they singled up CD any number of times, and they threw it out to him on comebacks and a little uh, comeback out route, and they just didn't connect. Dak and him, they they just did not connect. So the, the interesting thing, too, is coming out of the offense that, that CD – did at Oklahoma, great offense, right? Mm-hmm. We know that. Kyler Murray, but you don't run you, you don't run the NFL Taylor route. Tree. Smith, you know, you, you, everything he ran, there were shallow crossers, there were seam routes, there were deep overs, nothing where you're coming in and out of break. So, uh, you know, again, I don't know what what do you guys consider a number one receiver? Because we all throw that term around. But if I say this guy is a number one receiver, what does that mean to you? Uh, he's going to command some double teams pretty often. Uh, he's, at the very least, going to be matched up with the best corner on the opposing team very often, uh, and he is going to be able to win those battles in a way that has him consistently over a 1,000 yards uh, and just a guy that you feel like at any moment I can I can force him the ball, basically, and he's going to be there for me. And I'm going to say, uh, and I agree with Eric, I'm going to say Choppy broke it down pretty well and when he described it in baseball terms. He says there are aces, we're pitchers, and there are number one pitchers. 
Now, your number one pitcher yeah. may not be an ace, but he's your number right. one pitcher on your staff. So it depends on the team and how good that number one receiver is because just like Eric said, if I'm a defensive coordinator, my first priority is to take you out of the game. Right, and I, I agree with you guys, and, and I like the choppies, the ace analogy. Yeah. And it's kind of like if you think of an ace in baseball, if you have to think, is this guy an ace? I mean, when you said, you know, when these guys were at their prime, right, Max Scherzer, uh, Justin Verlander, Randy Johnson, did you, is that guy an ace? He's, oh, yeah, no, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. If you think about Joe Blow, is he an ace? Uh, if you have to think about it, he's probably not. Correct. So I, I think we all look at Devontae Adams and just say, oh, yeah. okay, that's a number one receiver. Hopkins, you know, that, okay, that's a number, no, no question. Yeah. That's number Tyreek one Hill, receiver. yeah. Tyreek Hill, number one receiver. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? We're mentioning these guys and two or three, or two of the three <laughs> yeah. are going to new team. <laughs> They're all over the place now, man. It has been. You know, a can, I think, and I think that number one receiver, it's almost like a franchise quarterback, right? You, mm -hmm. you can't, uh, how do you define a franchise quarterback? Um, it goes back to being, are you an ace or are you the number one guy in your staff? Right. Are you a franchise quarterback or are you the quarterback of your particular franchise? But, you know, hey, it goes back, uh, there was obviously the very famous 1964 obscenity ruling uh, by, by Potter Stewart, who talked about obscenity in the ruling, and he said, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. <laughs> and, it I, and I That's think that, goes, that holds true for the number one receiver, right? Absolutely. It's not like I said, okay, he's doesn't have to average 15.6 a catch. He doesn't have to average this. It's just, hey, when I see one, I'll know it. Yeah, yeah. You know what's so I actually, funny? I like that I analogy know, better than uh, than Choppies. I do too. And, <laughs> yeah, and you know, I don't know that I don't know that we've seen it from CD Lamb yet. Where you say, "Oh yeah, there's I your number." Totally one. agreeing right. with you. I, I went to OU. I love CD Lamb, but I just don't think he's a dominant X yet. I think he's got the projection to get there, but he's not quite there yet. That being said, and I was, you know, like I said, I was talking about you know Dak and and Kellen and and trying to get him the ball or whatever it takes. Again, I'm not right. sure if he's that dominant X yet. I do know one thing. I do believe, and you play quarterback, so I want you to challenge me on this. I think the quarterback's got to try to get the ball to the receiver because when Matthew Stafford went to the Rams, Cooper Cup was a very fine receiver. And guess what? Matthew Stafford started throwing him the ball, and all of a sudden he's <laughs> dominant. I'm talking about Cooper Cup. Everybody would love to yeah. have him now. Even in the Super Bowl, he's forcing the ball to Cooper Cup. But guess what else Matthew Stafford did? He led the league in interceptions, but he didn't care because he knew Cooper Cup was going to catch the ball. Going back to the Bruce Arians, no, no risk it, no biscuit, right? There you go. So uh, you yeah, got to throw to him. We, I think we can all uh, safely say that Cooper Cup is the number one receiver. Yes, right? that was. Yeah, so it, it, you know, there's a lot to be determined, and I want to let's go back to CD Lamb just a little bit. You know, this is only his third year in the league. And remember, his first year, they did not, they basically didn't have off season. They didn't have an off season because of COVID and training mm -hmm. camp was minimal and they didn't have preseason games. And it was, it was just a totally different year. So while he's coming into his third year, uh, the training camp is really where you put that work in and you work in techniques and off season stuff. And he, he didn't have one for one of his years. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, he's a talented guy. I love his toughness. That's, there's no denying how tough he is. He's got to work on his drops. He's had too many drops. But um, we'll, we'll see if all of a sudden, sometimes, too, you grow into that role when there's that other guy over there, as we all know, and it probably works in a lot of businesses, a lot of professions, where you, that other guy is pulling the load, so you kind of fall back a little bit. Well, Amari Cooper is gone, and so it's CD's turn to now say, okay, I'm the guy, and he may look and act and walk and talk a little bit differently this year. And guess what? He's going to start the season without Michael Gallup for a couple of games, so it's really going to be hard for him. Yeah, the opportunity yeah. is going to be there. Yeah, and I, I, you know, it's funny. I don't know what happened to James Washington um, in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, late second round pick. Obviously, the Cowboys signed him in free agency, and uh, Pittsburgh didn't. I don't want to say find a way to utilize him. I mean, but it. His starts in the last three years, he went from 10 to 7 to 2. The most receptions he's had in the season is 44. But I really liked him coming out of Oklahoma State. I mean, I really liked him. Now, again, I have not watched Pittsburgh week in and week out. Mm -hmm. 
uh, like we watched the Cowboys. So I don't know what happened to him there, but I am intrigued to see uh, what they can do with him. And as you guys know, sometimes a fresh start in any sport, uh, you just get viewed differently, and, and that could happen here for him. Uh, babe, how confident are you that we're going to get the uh, the the Dak Prescott of the first six to eight weeks or so of last season as opposed to the final six to eight weeks of the season? Um, that's a good question in terms of how confident am I. Um, here's the thing. We, we've seen Dak do it, right? We've, we've seen him play some great football for extended periods of time. And it started in his rookie season. So we, we know that he can be that guy. Um, I don't know what happened to him (laughs) in that last half of the season. Obviously he went out with the calf injury and I, I, Dak is the kind of guy, as you all know, he's not going to make excuses. He's not going to tell you this hurt, that hurt. But he, he certainly didn't play well in, in the second half of the season. Uh, certainly not up to his standard anyway. But then he looked great, obviously, in the first half of the season. <laughs> so, again, the, the bottom line for me is we've seen him do it. We've seen him do it on a consistent basis. So, in answer to your question, yes, I am confident that, that he can be that guy for him. And the other thing, too, very quickly, and it was a horrible division. We all know that. Mm-hmm. But they did win 12 games last year. Um, so I, I think you, you, you lose that San Francisco game and everybody goes in the tank and Jerry wants to fire the head coach. And, but they won 12 games. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you can't throw that out the window. <laughs> 